morning, good morning. Good morning. How's everybody today? I mean, look over my glasses so you don't look blurry. Good deal. Hey, uh, you know, today I was talking to the choir, and you, you remember the little radios that you would uh, had a little dial, and you had to tune them in, right? Not like the digital ones. You just go straight to it, but you, you know what I'm talking about? Y'all shake your head like this. You know what I'm talking about, right? All right, so today we're going to tune in. We're going to tune in to the, to the Holy Spirit of God and just really seek to hear His voice. Uh, you know, this morning we're going to be in our service with, with the theme of holiness. And uh, as we talk about this, as we sing about this, the holiness of God, you know, it refers to the absolute moral purity of God and is also, it also uh, um, refers to the moral distance between God and his human creation. God is holy in, in every attribute and in every action. He's holy in love, mercy, power, and he's holy in sovereignty. So more than being immortal, God's eternal nature, it means that he does not change. God's holiness, it sets him apart from all else. So today, he truly is worthy of all of our praise. So let us praise him. Amen, church? Amen. Let's stand together and let's sing. Stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Holy is the Lord God God. 
praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning. The Lord is holy, isn't he? Yes, right. He reigns on high. Let's go to the Lord in prayer now. Father, we thank you for this time that we have to come together and worship you. And Lord, we just uh, thank you for each person that's here. We're thankful, especially for the visitors that we might have with us, Lord. We just pray that each one would go away saying it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. And Father, this morning we come to you with uh, Israel on our minds. Lord, we just lift up your country, God, your people. Father, we know that... Uh, the Israelites, the Jews, are your people, Father, your, 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 own, your own people. And God, today we lift them up as, as, uh, as they're being attacked on both sides, Lord. We know that this is in the Bible, that that's what will happen to them, Lord, that they will be attacked. But, Lord, we know that, that you will deliver them. And we just pray for peace for Israel today. And, God, we just lift up our country and we pray that we might always stand for Israel, Father. We know that the country that stands for Israel is favored by you. And Lord, our country has been favored for you for a long time, and we, we hope that we will always be faithful. We pray for that. And Lord, we just lift up our services to you this morning. We pray for Brother Mike as he comes to deliver the message in a few minutes. Pray for Brother Michael as he leads, and, and for Andy as he leads with the youth, God. Just continue to bless our church and bless our land. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Be seated. Well, good morning. Man, it is so good to be in the house of the Lord. We have, um, I've been just worshiping this morning and seeing just uh, so many places, just in random places, just the phrase of He is risen. And then looking at our banners and the, just that constant reminder of, yes, Easter happened two weeks ago, but I love on Sunday mornings that we can come together and celebrate Easter every week. And I don't think we should ever lose sight of the fact that Easter happened and the fact that that should be just a daily celebration for us. We, we, we serve a risen Savior, and we are so thankful for that. Because that is our hope, that is our peace, and that is our rock that we can stand on. So uh, today, um, if this is your first time, and uh, we, we are so thankful that you are here, there is a perforated section in our bulletin. If you could take some time and uh, tear that out and then just drop that in our offering plate. And we would love to meet you, shake your hand, and uh, meet you in the foyer um, after service. We don't want to take it lightly the fact that we honor the fact that you are here. We are so thankful, and we are so blessed that you, we, you could have spent your Sunday anywhere, but we are thankful that you spent it with us here. And if you do not have a church home, we would love for you to consider us to be your church home. We would love just for you to get connected. We've got a loving congregation that we would love to be that family for you. We also have a lot of announcements uh, that are coming up. I was talking to the secretary this uh, past week of how the bulletin is full, um, but there's just a lot going on this week, um, and then it uh, will open up some space going in, but leading up to summer, it's just going to be full every Sunday. Uh, so y'all keep up with y'all's bulletins. Y'all keep up with the newsletters that go out because there's a lot happening, and we don't want you to miss out on any of it. First, I want to uh, say thank you for just a lot of things. If, if some of you noticed that uh, I was not here, me and my wife were not here last Sunday, that is because we brought the youth group, and uh, eight of our youth, we capped it at, at around eight um, because we needed a smaller group to go, and we went to Branson last week, and it was a great, great trip. We were able to really just pour into these students. Um, it was hosted at Silver Dollar City, and they did a really, really good job bringing speakers in and breakout sessions that were applicable to these youth. Um, just a really great opportunity for um, these students to grow and grow in their faith. And that, out of that, we are also going to be starting up a uh, Sunday, Sunday night Bible study starting on April 28th for new believers um, in our youth group and uh, older uh, kids group. Um, so it's one of those, we, we have to disciple these kids. We can't just expect when these kids get uh, saved that they are going to just know how to act like a saved person. 
Um, and so we are going to walk alongside them. So y'all be praying for that. Um, but we also want to give a big, big thank you for our parking lot party during our Eclipse. At Eclipse um, parking lot party, we had about 180 um, people there last uh, Monday, um, on Monday. So we had a great, great turnout. We had a great turnout of our members who came out to volunteer. We genuinely couldn't have done it without y'all. And I, I don't just say that to, uh, to just make y'all feel good. These events, I was talking to some other adults. These events are VBS that we're going to have coming up. Um, and, and just our daily or weekly Wednesday night uh, gatherings and Sunday school and everything. We cannot do it without y'all. And we are so thankful. We don't take it lightly that y'all serve. We do need more volunteers uh, upcoming to uh, fill in some roles. And if you have a desire to serve, we've got a place for you. And we would love to get you connected. Um, but for that eclipse party, y'all really showed up in a big way. And we were able to minister to a bunch of people um, and really just be a light. Um, and it is kind of convenient with us being a light when the moon created darkness. And it was, just, it, was, it was a cool illustration of just God's power and God's love. Um, but we also want to give a thanks to y'all's giving for Annie Armstrong, North American Missions. Um, we did exceed our goal, um, and so we are thankful that y'all gave as well as that goes toward missions here within this continent. Um, but there are, there are also a bunch of other announcements going on, and I will run through these uh, fairly quickly so we can get to the uh, rest of service. But this Tuesday, we have our WOW meeting, our women's gathering um, that will be meeting, and they're having an ugly purse auction. If you did not go last year, it, is a, it was a lot of fun, and I can say that as I think the only male there last year because I was the auctioneer for the ugly purse auction. Um, if you uh, have an ugly purse just lying around or you go to the store and you say, I don't know why anyone would buy this purse, <laughs> that's the purse you should bring. If you just have a purse from the 1970s and say, why did I ever buy this? Bring that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Just fill it with a pound of something, um, and, and we will auction it off. It is not for real money. There is going to be money that is passed out that y'all can, uh, can buy these things. So you're kind of buying it for the purse, but also the stuff in it. It's, kind of, it's a wacky night, but come for laughs. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be a good time. Um, so I will be auctioneering again, and so that will be on Tuesday at 6.30. So be there and uh, come for a good time. On Wednesday, we will be having our adult Bible study and prayer time. Um, that happens at the same time as our kids and youth. Um, we are also having a theme night on, uh, for kids and youth, and if you just want to come in your rain attire on Wednesday, I haven't looked at the forecast to see if it's supposed to rain, but that is our theme night. We're having April showers theme night, so come decked out in your long uh, yellow uh, rain jacket, rain uh, whatever, rain gear, um, and ha just have a good time. Uh, that's what we're trying to do on uh, Wednesday nights and uh, get to minister as well. Tonight we are having a church conference uh, meeting that will be uh, tonight at 6 in, uh, during our service. And so uh, be here. There's going to be some, uh, quite a bit of things being talked about. There's also an agenda out in the foyer for you to pick up as well. Um, then also next Sunday, I'm kind of skipping around just trying to hit the highlights. Next Sunday we will be having a VBS meeting. Um, right after service, we will be having uh, food there, and it, it won't, we'll try not to make it too long, um, but if you are interested at all about serving, we want you there. It also, you will not have to, uh, to cover any of your meals on Sunday besides breakfast if you want to, because that is also going to be the day that we're going to have a potluck on, uh, after our service on uh, Sunday night. So come for VBS meeting, come to eat on, uh, for lunch, then come to eat on Sunday night, and you've got your meals covered. And so we are trying to make it easy for you, but we have a lot to share, a lot to cover for that VBS meeting, and VBS is coming very quickly. That will be June 2nd through the 7th, so that's going to be a Monday through Friday, but that Sunday, the 2nd, is going to be our VBS kickoff party. Um, so there are, there are other announcements on the uh, bulletin. There's, uh, there's a homebound ministry. Come to minister to the homebound. That will be on uh, Thursday, uh, this Thursday at 1.30. Um, then we also have dominoes happening this week, and that will be on Friday. So y'all keep up with your bulletin. But with that being said, we're going to invite um, Brother Michael to uh, continue our worship.
Or, yeah, okay. And then uh, we're going to dismiss the uh, Children for Children's Church. Yeah, I think Brother Mike's coming up, but Ms. Frieda wanted me to mention about the wow that is potluck. Potluck. Tuesday night potluck. Wow. <laughs> Okay. Yes, I never know what to expect some Sundays. Listen, I, I know David Ramsey already began our service, and I appreciate that. Uh, mindful uh, of what's going on in the Middle East. And uh, in light of that, uh, like you, I've watched news reports, and, and I, I sent a, a word out the minute I heard about it, uh, about the fact that at that time, they were saying that Iran was sending thousands of missiles toward Israel. And, uh, and in fact, it was going back the other way also. And we had America involved in trying to take them down. I am so grateful. They were talking about how between Iran and Israel, they have over half a million missiles. That's just a crazy amount of missiles. And they were talking about thousands. Well, this morning when I got up, the first news report I heard was that it wasn't thousands, it was hundreds. And I can tell you, God already answered prayer. Uh, as, as, you know, I, I just thank Lord. And, uh, and spared life in, some, in Israel. One little girl was injured. That was it. No one was killed. And, uh, and we're grateful for that. But let me just remind you, as was said in... Uh, Psalms 122, verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They that love you will prosper. And, uh, and so I hope you'll continue to do that. And then when it comes to, to war and how do you pray about that, I want to remind you of what it says in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1. As I live, declares the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked would turn from his way, turn back, Turn back from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? I want you to know, in the midst of this, I want to pray for peace, but I also want to pray that people would come to know Jesus. And I want to pray that he would be lifted up, that, that people in the midst of their desperation might turn to the Lord. And if we want to know peace in the Middle East, it's not going to be brokered by politicians it's going to be provided by Jesus Christ. And uh, so I, I want to encourage you. God doesn't delight to see anyone killed. He wants to see all come to know him. And then when I think of our politicians, when I think of what's going on, I think of James 1, 5, and 6. If anyone lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men generously without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting, for the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the waves. Once more, can I just lead you, in, and let's just pray for the Middle East. Let's pray for our nation. Do, they need, do our elected leaders need wisdom? Incredible wisdom for these days. And so once more, let me just, just lead you, and let's, let's pray again. Father God, it's hard for us to understand when they say that last night over a million Israelis took shelter in bomb shelters. And Father, we, we thank you that we live in a country that's blessed and that enjoys the peace we do and we can't imagine how we would feel if our families were caught in such crisis. Father, we do pray that in the midst of this turmoil, that, God, there would be people who turn to you. Lord, we pray that you would divinely reveal yourself, your presence, that you would divinely intervene in ways that bring you glory and honor and that draw people to yourself. And, God, we pray for those who are making decisions at every level in all of these countries, in our own country, God, give wisdom and guidance for these days. 
Help us to make decisions and choices that invite your blessing and your favor and through which you can use to accomplish your will. For Lord, we desire your will, your kingdom come as we pray it again today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, let me let Michael continue to lead us as we worship. Let's stand together, all right? Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we I've carried a burden far too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see you now, I'm laying it down, and I know that I need you. I run to the Father, I fall into grace, I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father again and Again and again and again. Oh, 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 you saw my condition, had a plan from the start. Your son for redemption. The price for my heart. I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand. I can't comprehend. All I know is I need you. I run to the Father. I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, oh, again and again and again and again. Long before my 
to weigh. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I'll run to the Father again and again. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend, so I run to the Father again and again. so much of our lives running from God, following after our own way, following after our own selfish desires. And the scripture says, you know, there is a way that seems right to a man. But in the end, it leads to destruction. Now, I generally say I don't know about you, but in this regard, folks, I'm sorry, but I do know about you. And what I know about us is that we've all been there. Yeah, yeah. And folks, if we're truly going to see the power of God unleashed in our hearts and unleashed in our lives, unleashed in this church, it's going to happen when we run to the Father yes, with everything we have with all that I am my daughter ran a track meet yesterday there were some of those runners who were running pretty fast they wouldn't let me run (laughs) but I'm almost certain everybody there could have beat me But it doesn't matter how fast you run. It just matters what direction you're running. Amen. Amen. Come on. So run to the Father. Run into His loving arms and let Him change your life. I run to the Father. I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding. No reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend, so I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, again. Uh, the men of our church that would like to come and, and join us at the front and we have a time of prayer where we pray for Brother Mike. So if that's you, if you'd come. Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you for the opportunity to gather together and to worship you. Like Michael said, we need to be running toward you. 
So, Father, I just ask that you build a hedge around Brother Mike and this church. And if there's any decisions that need to be made for you, let them be today, Father. And, Father, I pray all these things in your precious Son's name. Amen. Names. Those that draw near to me, when you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. And, uh, and I hope that's why you're here, because you have a desire to draw near to the Lord. And one of the ways that we do that is, is through his word. And today, as you have your portion of God's word, I'm going to invite you to look with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 3. And this morning, I want to talk to you about the answer. The answer. Now, if you're wondering, the answer to what? What's the question? Let me just say to you today, you tell me. What is the question? Whatever the issue is in your life, whatever the problem, whatever the concern, be it spiritual, be it relational, be it physical, or today even international, or mental, I want to tell you today about the answer. And put very simply, his name is Jesus. Jesus. That's where it all starts and stops. And that's what we see highlighted in these verses. And if you're here and you want to say, Brother Mike, now all that sounds good, but that's just too simplistic. Let me just let you know. The Bible says it's so simple, even a child, even a child can accept it and receive it. Whatever the concern, whatever the problem, I want you to know the answer begins, the real answer begins with Jesus. You found it in your God's Word, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Let me invite you to stand once more in honor of God, in honor of His Word. And we read, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings to us, that besets us so closely, that we can run with endurance the race that is set before us. Notice verse 2. Looking to Jesus, the author of, the founder, the perfecter or finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down, is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Would you pray with me? Father God, today, I don't know what's going on in the lives of those who are here listening to this message or the lives of those who may be watching online. But God, you know what's going on in each one of our hearts. And God, you want to use the events and circumstances of our life, even this day, to draw us to yourself. And uh, Father, I pray that you would take your word and by your spirit very personally apply it in each of our lives. And God, even now, it's in Jesus' name we give you the glory and honor. Amen and amen. You can be seated. I entitled this message, The Secret. 
Because whatever it is that's going on in your life, the answer is Jesus, and that doesn't need to be a secret. He wants us to help other people come to know about him. Who is he? First of all, I would say to you what many of you should already know. He wasn't just a man. The Bible is so clear. He was the God-man. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, the Son of God, was the Word made flesh. And He dwelt among us that we might behold the glory. The glory is of the only begotten Son of God. Full of grace and of truth. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Jesus is the one and only mediator. The one and only mediator between God and man. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way. Not just a way, but the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. In Acts chapter 4 verse 12 it says, There is no other name given among men whereby you must be saved. If, depending on your translation, if, if you have a more modern translation, it says he is the author and the perfecter. In the, in the King James, it says he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And it's just saying in both translations, it starts and it stops with Jesus. When it comes to understanding Jesus Christ is the finisher of our faith, that's saying that he has done everything that has to be done for us to be made right with a holy God. And I remember a story that I heard many years ago, and I can't even remember where it started, but it was a story someone told of how there was a preacher who was witnessing to a cabinet maker in his community. And... Like preachers do, I show up at all kinds of times, and the guy was working in his shop, and, uh, and he started talking to him about the Lord, and, uh, and uh, was sharing with him that, you know what, when it comes to putting faith and trust in Jesus, you come like a little child. You don't have to have it all figured out. You just have to be willing to put your faith and trust in Jesus And he's done everything that has to be done for you to be made right with God. And the cabinet maker just looked at him and said, it just can't be that simple. You know, you got to work for it. You got to do something more than just say you believe in Jesus. The preacher looked around and he had just finished working on a beautiful table that somebody had ordered. And he had put layer after layer after layer of finish on it. And it was shiny and it looked beautiful. It was ready for the person to come receive it. And the preacher did the unimaginable. He went over and he picked up a piece of sandpaper. And started to walk over to that table. And started to say, I think this spot right here needs just a little bit of a touch And you can imagine how that cabinet cabinet craftsman just went nuts. Preacher, don't want, don't, you're going to ruin it. It's finished. And he said, that's the way it is with your salvation. You're keeping, you keep trying to add to it. You just have to accept what Jesus Christ has done. He is the author. He's the finisher of our salvation foundation of our salvation another translation says that he is the pioneer (laughs) he's the one that opens up the way into the very presence of god revelation chapter 22 verses 13 says i am the alpha and the omega i'm the beginning and i'm the end when it comes to you and i having a relationship with god again let me just emphasize It starts and it stops 
with Jesus, with who he is, with what he's done. I, I, I like how, how the Apostle Paul put it in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, he who has begun a good work in you will see it through until completion. And, and let me just tell you, there's some of you he's got a lot more work to do on. And you can look at me, preacher. Have you seen yourself in the mirror? There, there's a lot more he needs to do in your life. And I'm going to say yes. But guess what he says? He who has begun a good work in you will see it through to completion. You know what? We look to him. We look to him as the answer, whatever the, the question may be, because of who he is. But also... We look to him because of what he did. Did you notice what it said there? It says he endured the cross. He endured the cross. It says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, He who knew no sin became sin for us. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrated his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the Bible says right here, He took our shame. He says, despising the shame, the ridicule, the scorn that we deserve, He took it all on the cross. The book of Deuteronomy said, Cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus Christ was cursed that you and I might be blessed. Our salvation is made possible because of who he was. Our salvation is made personal because of what he did. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. Now, when it comes to trying to understand salvation, one of the best pictures I know of in the Bible is what you find in the book of Genesis. When you read in Genesis chapter 5 and 6 about a man named Noah. A man named Noah. He found favor in the eyes of the Lord in the midst of a wicked and evil generation. And God had determined that he was ready to start all over. He was just going to wipe it all out. And he said, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And he built an amazing ark for the animals that we read about in Scripture, but also for himself and his family. And it's interesting, it says that when they got on board that ark, God shut the door I want you to know Noah and his family were saved from the judgment God sent to this earth because they were in the ark it wasn't because God told them now I want you to put seven pegs on the outside and y'all just hang on for dear life you know what we're not saved by hanging on he wasn't saved by hanging on he was saved because he and his family we're in the ark. I want you to know, it's when you and I are in Jesus Christ, we're delivered. Amen. We're saved. We come to know God's mercy and God's grace in our life. I want you to know, Jesus is the answer because of who he is, the author, the finisher of our faith, because of, of what he's done he hung on a cross for you and I. He died for our sin, despising the scorn. And he's been raised. He's been raised and is seated in the heavenlies. And that brings me to the next thing. When it comes to our salvation, we need to remember where he is. Where he is. He didn't stay on the cross. On Easter Sunday, 
we talked about when they went into the tomb. The tomb was what? It was empty. He wasn't there. Why? He had ascended to the Father. He was risen from the dead. A demonstration that the Father had accepted His sacrifice for our sin on the cross. And when we talk about the fact that He was risen from the dead, it talks about how He was set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Do you know why He was sitting down? Because His work was done. His work of salvation and redemption was done. Now, Back several years ago, back when I spent some time in the Texas State Penitentiary, I was there helping preach a revival, just to be clear. I have told different ones, I have been in every county jail, city jail, state jail, federal pen I've been in all of them at different times but thankfully as with that day it was one of those times I was visiting and I was assisting with a revival I was helping do some follow-up and some counseling and I had this gentleman who came up to me and he had a question he says I have a question we're talking about Jesus and and he saw the the cross that was hanging on the wall in the chaplain in that particular penitentiary. And it was just a cross. And here was his question. Why don't you have Jesus on your cross? Because he was raised and brought up in a church that always had a picture of Jesus on the cross. And I was glad to be able to tell him, Because he didn't stay on the cross. He didn't stay in the tomb. He rose from the dead. And one day, he's coming again. For all those who've trusted in him. Now, different ones will go, what is he doing right now? Many of you know within our church family, In the last few weeks, it seems like we've had various families, members who've passed away. Let me remind you what it says in John chapter 14. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. A place for you. And and as I shared just this past week, it's not that he just prepares a place. The real meaning in the Greek... I've gone to prepare a room for you. Now, some of you know that Kathy and I are planning to go see our grandkids within the next couple of weeks. And uh, and we're looking forward to that opportunity. But I'm glad that my son is not saying, okay, now there's a house out back or a room out back there. You can go stay in that. Guess what? We're going to stay in their house. We want to be where the family is. And guess what? When Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, it's not just a place. It literally is a room. A room that where I am there, you can be also. And I want you to know that's our hope. In a world that offers so little hope, Jesus Christ provokes Hope for now, but not just for now, but for all eternity. That's why I'm telling you today, whatever it is that you may be going through in your life, no matter what's happening in your life, you need to look to Jesus because of who He is, the Son of God who came and died on the cross for your sin, who paid the price that you might be made right with holy God and have access to His mercy and grace in your life because of what He's done. 
when he died on the cross, as you've heard others say and I've said, your name was on that cross. My name was on that cross. He died in our place. And he is risen to prepare a place for all who've trusted in him. I shared with you, as I talked about praying for what's going on in the Middle East right now, I'm not praying that God would kill our enemies. God takes no del delight in the death of the wicked, but that they would repent and turn to him. In these days, we need to pray that God would draw many to himself. But I also want to say to you, it's important today that you know that you have trusted in Jesus. It's not enough to know about it. It's not enough to know the story. Do you know Jesus? If you've never trusted in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, today I appeal to you, don't put it off. Let today be that day that you receive Christ as Lord and Savior in your life. And I want to say to you, if you're here and you go, well, Brother Mike, you know what? I, I, I have trusted in Christ, but I really haven't been living in a way that either other people can see Jesus in and through my life. Let me just say to you, today needs to be that day of renewed commitment of rededication to Jesus Christ. He wants other people to see him through you, through your attitudes, through your actions, through your life. And not only does he want other people to see you, see him, see him through you, <laughs> he wants you to be a part of his church that has the responsibility of lifting up Jesus in this lost world. Whatever it is that's going on in your life today, whatever the need may be, again, let me tell you, it starts with Jesus and your relationship with him. And that's what I invite you to respond to. What he wants in your life in light of that relationship. Would you stand with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, again I come and I I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you for how you have spoken your word to my own heart in this week. And Lord, I pray that you would use the issues and problems and concerns that may be on the heart of various ones that are here today to just draw them to yourself. God, today, work and have your will and your way in our lives. And Lord, for that one who's here who's never personally trusted in Christ, is their Lord and their Savior. Lord, for, we pray today could be the day. For those that have trusted you but need to move forward in commitment to you or to your church in some way, let today be a fresh start of surrender and obedience to your spirit and to your word. And God, we give you the glory and honor as we pray and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to the online service here at Trinity Baptist Church. My name is Andy Doonan and I am the student pastor. What a wonderful opportunity it is for you to be able to worship with us online. But I would like to invite you to come out and worship with us in person as well. Our Sunday morning service starts at 11 a.m. each and every Sunday morning. Join us in person at 702 Church Street in Benton, Arkansas. Find more information about our church and the opportunities to serve 
at trinitybenton.com. If you have any questions, be sure and email us at trinitybenton at ymail.com. We look forward to worshiping with you very soon, and God bless.